Good morning, everybody. This is Resurrection Morning. This is Resurrection Morning. Let us worship the Lord this morning before we jump into ministration. And I'm believing God this morning that because the spirit that resurrected the Lord Jesus from the grave, from the dead, lives in you and I. Ha! There is something that is about to shift in your life this morning. Maskala Makita. Iaraba Sikilibisika. Love wonders. During mighty things. Feeling the oppressed. Setting captives free. He's the lady of the valley. The bright and morning star. The truth that ruled the nations, the great and mighty one, heaven and earth adore, angels bow before him, he's a great one, the great that I am, he are the great I am, the great I am, he's a great I am. Oh. He's a great I am. He's only a fancy. He's a great I am. The great I am. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for you have paid the price. You have paid the price. You have turned sin to salvation. Thank you this morning for you are faithful. You are the great I am, the great I am. You are 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 the great I am. Good morning this morning, Tony. Good morning, Anthony. Good morning, blessings, blessings, blessings. This is resurrection morning. Blessings, blessings. People of God. There is a shift just as the grave could not hold him. Nothing shall hold you this morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Maskala Maskita. Mightier than the mightiest, you stronger than the stronger. Really make the best, yes. You are better than the best. You are better than the best. You are better than the best. Better than the best. You are the great I am. 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 Oh, Ramasita Baskaya, Resurrection Money. My God, the day that changed the course of history. Ah, Maskala Baskita. Today, people of God. Because the grave could not hold him. I prophesy over your life this morning. No situation, no stagnation, no frustration, no sickness, no disease shall hold you captive. You are coming out today in the name of the Lord Jesus. The, the spirit of resurrection, the power of resurrection is available this morning, people of God. Hmm. Oh, the little out of my head. You are the great I am. 
You are the great I am. You are the great I am. You are the great I am. You are the great I am. You are the great. We adore you, my Savior and my God. We adore you this morning. Your great I am. We worship your holy name this morning. We join the innumerable company of angels. And we declare holy, holy, holy. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. You are the great I am, Master Labakita. Iyaraba sekelebeskita. Ikataba selebesiyama kaskayaraba skipa. Good morning this morning, people of God. Good morning, resurrection morning. Welcome this morning, people of God. I'm glad that you are alive and strong and well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome. This is divine guidance. Hallelujah. Divine guidance where we are called to sanitize the church. Hallelujah. Depopulating hell and populating heaven and bringing fulfillment to lives. Hallelujah. People of God, this is resurrection morning. People of God, we will go into a brief historical background of this day that we celebrate and we will lay the foundation and then we will take off and see what the power of God will do in your lives this morning. Hallelujah. Let us begin by buying our heads and saying a few words of prayer this morning. Father, we thank you for this day that we are living well and strong. Because it was the day, O oh God, that you conquered the grave. And validates, oh God, everything you ministered, everything you proclaimed was validated because of the resurrection. This morning, Father, I confess my inabilities. For you are my sufficiency. Father, use this earthen vessel of clay. And minister your word, your infallible word to your people this day, O oh God, Father. May lives never be the same. May destinies be altered. Thank you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 People of God, this is a very important day in the history of the church, in the history of Christianity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today is Easter. Easter. What is the relevance of Easter? What is Easter? What is Easter? I will give you some few definitions and give you some a, 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 a historical background about this day that you and I celebrate. Hallelujah. Today we see Christians all across the world celebrating Easter. But what is the biblical significance of Easter? The meaning of Easter is simple, people of God. The meaning of Easter is simple. The meaning of Easter is is Jesus Christ's victory over death. His resurrection symbolizes the eternal life that is granted to all who believe in him. My God. The meaning of Easter also symbolizes the complete verification of all that Jesus preached and taught during his three-year ministry. It validates it. How he left in the great people of God there will have been no claim whatsoever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If Jesus had merely died and not been resurrected, he would have been considered just another teacher. Just another Jewish rabbi. Hallelujah. Just like the, 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 the founders and the leaders of other religions, like, like, like Buddhism, you know, you know that the, the founders were dead and they were buried. And that was it. They still have tombs. They still have graves where you can point to today and say this is where their founder was buried. And he still left there. Hallelujah. But that does not apply to the Christian God. Hallelujah. His resurrection validated him. It validates him as the true son of God. People of God. That he conquered death once and for all. Hallelujah. People of God, this is the day that I believe that the church was born. Some theologians may think that the church was born. Hallelujah. The church was born on the day of Pentecost. But I personally believe 
that the restoration of Jesus, ah, my God, was the deed that the church was birthed. Hallelujah. Because had he left in the grave, hallelujah, we would have had nothing to cling to. Hallelujah. People of God, people of God, you and I, we've all sinned and deserve death and God's judgment. God the Father sent his only son to, test, to satisfy that judgment for those who believe in him. Hallelujah. For those who believe in him. Jesus, the creator and eternal son of God, who lived a sinless life, who lived a sinless life, lived a sinless life, loved us so much that he died for our sins, died for our sins, died for our sins. And we will see in the book of Isaiah prophecy, Isaiah 53, we shall read that very shortly. And see, this was foretold by the prophet Isaiah. And it became fulfilled in the New Testament. We will look at the book of Mark chapter 16, verse 1 to 20. Hallelujah. And even Jesus himself predicted his death. Hallelujah. Predicted his death. We will see that in the book of Mark chapter 8, verse 31 to 38. Hallelujah. People of God. He lived a sinless life. He loved us so much that he died for our sins. Taking the punishment that you and I deserve. That you and I deserve. The Bible says that he was buried and rose again on the third day according to the Bible. Hallelujah. If you truly believe and trust in your heart, receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior, declaring Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. You will be saved from judgment and spend eternity with him in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People of God. People of God. This is a very unique day in the Christian religion. The resurrection of Jesus, as described in the New Testament of the Bible, is essentially the foundation upon which the Christian religion, religion is built. Therefore, Easter is a very significant date on the Christian calendar. Hallelujah. A very significant date. Easter, Easter is the principal Christian feast day and commemorates the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. The central event of Christianity this is the main event. When you hear main event, this was the main event to validate his claim as the Messiah, as the true son of God, people of God. That is why people like us have the audacity, have the boldness to proclaim that Jesus is alive. When, his, when he was crucified, when he was buried, his disciples, his disciples, I believe, were quiet and silenced. Their leader, the one that they claimed to, was gone. He was beaten mercilessly. He was disgraced. He was bruised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he was lying in the tomb. Could you have imagined? Ha! Huh? Their countenance was sad. Hallelujah. But it was resurrection money. It was resurrection money that brought a smile to their face that they now had an answer for those who claim that they were following the wrong person. Hallelujah. People of God, I can only imagine how the disciples felt. Hallelujah. When the news hit them, that Jesus has risen. My God. My God. Easter is the celebration of the restoration of Jesus from the tomb. On the third day after his crucifixion. Easter is the fulfilled prophecy of the Messiah. Who will be persecuted. Die for our sins. And rise on the third day. Hallelujah. According to Isaiah 53. People of God. I will make this statement. Remembering the resurrection of Jesus is a way to renew daily hope 
that we have victory over sin. We have victory over sin. We have victory over sin. This was the day that the Lord Jesus turned sin into salvation. Sin was turned into salvation. On this day, people of God, people of God, let me give you a little uh, 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 historical context on how this day began. This day began. The early Christians, the early Christians, okay, begin remembering the resurrection every Sunday following its occurrence. In AD 325, the Council of Nicaea, the Jewish Council, the Jewish Council, the Council of Nicaea, set aside a special day just to celebrate the resurrection. Hallelujah. Since Easter is a celebration of Jesus' resurrection, you would think there wouldn't be room for paganism. However, one of the holidays most intertwined with symbolism and rituals of paganism and sinful acts has been, hallelujah, has been Easter. We see some, they misunderstand and celebrate Easter. Some celebrated Easter in the nightclub. Some celebrated Easter, the, uh, Easter they have traveled to Sin City, you know, to commit sin and they believe that they are doing good to Jesus. They are doing good to Jesus. They are celebrating in their own mind, in their own thoughts. Hallelujah. That is the wrong way to celebrate. Hallelujah. Jesus conquered the grave. Jesus conquered sin. So how can we celebrate Easter by going back and playing in sin? Hallelujah. That is not the right way to celebrate Jesus. To celebrate Jesus. Let us let us read here. Let me let me go to Isaiah. Isaiah 53. Because everything about this day was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 53. And we're gonna read that. And then we will see how Jesus Himself predicted this as well. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. I'd like to read from... Uh, uh, let's read from the smart system. Or the hard cover Bible. Let's see Isaiah 53. Let's see. Let's see Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, people of God, people of God. This was predicted. This was foretold by the prophet Isaiah. Jesus confirmed that. And it was validated on Easter. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, beginning at verse 1. People of God. Isaiah 53, beginning at verse 1. It says that, has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed for he shall go up before him as a tender plant referring to Jesus and as a root out of dry ground he has no form or comeliness and when we see him there is no beauty that we should desire him he is despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Ha. Surely, surely, he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him, we esteem him, stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Jesus Christ. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we, all we like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened up his mouth 
My God, my God. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter's house. My God, my God. Let me read the, the, the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation. The New Living Translation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People of God. This morning. This morning. It says here. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He grew up before him. Up. He grew up before him like a tender root. And like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hid their faces. He was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we consider him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. Hallelujah. People of God, the chastisement that brought us peace was upon him. By his stripes, you and I, we are healed. The raising Savior, the suffering Messiah, people of God, the God that we serve, this Jesus that you and I celebrate, this Christian God that you and I celebrate, defy all odds. Hallelujah. He was at war. Hallelujah. With the, 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 the religious establishment that his claim to be the Messiah put him to the cross. They said he was blaspheming. Hallelujah. He was blaspheming. But this is the Messiah that was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah. By the prophet Isaiah. That he was going to suffer. He was going to be crucified. He was going to bear our pain, our iniquity, our sin was going to be put upon him. He was going to be crushed. Hallelujah. He was going to, to go to the cross for you and I that we can receive salvation and be free from judgment. Hallelujah. And be free from judgment. And be free from judgment. And this was what Jesus did on the cross. Everything that was prophesied. But the prophet Isaiah, Jesus also prophesied that in the book of Mark chapter, chapter 8 verse 31. Mark chapter 8 verse 31. Mark chapter 8 verse 31. People of God. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8 verse 31 to 38. Mark 8. 31 to 38. Mark 8. 31 to 38. Hallelujah. This is the Jesus. That we are pushing. Mark chapter 8, verse 31 to 38. 31 to 38. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a prophetic word that is coming for you. Don't go away. Don't go away. It says, and he began to and he began to teach them. This is referring to Jesus' teaching in the New Testament. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things. And be rejected by the elders and chief priests. I tell you, the religious establishment, the religious establishment, the religious establishment. Can you imagine the church that was supposed to protect him was the one huh, who even eventually took him to the cross. And he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke this word openly, boldness, openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. <laughs> My God. But when he had turned around and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter saying, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Hallelujah. Peter began to rebuke him. Say, Jesus, you're not going to die. You are not going to die. Now, Jesus was rebuking Peter. There was a spirit that was inside Peter that was speaking. 
It was Satan. Peter was not Satan. It was the spirit. Just as God is spirit. The enemy has the ability to enter people and speak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Peter was speaking and saying to Jesus, you are not going to die. Jesus get, said to him, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me. These things must happen. Other than that, salvation cannot come. The Son of God must go to the cross. Must go to the cross. Tell the forces. And when he had called the people to himself, with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will, will find it. Hallelujah. People of God. And as we will go through a, a, a Mark chapter 16, verse 1 to 20, it will tell us that this thing that Jesus just said, that he was to suffer. He was to suffer many things. He was to be handed over, to be, to, to be crucified, to be tortured by scribes and Pharisees. The religious establishment, everything became fulfilled. But something magnificent will happen on the third day. It was not. What was important, people of God, was not the beating and the bruising. Hallelujah. 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 We got benefits through the bruising, through the beating, through, you know, through the, 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 the stripes that he received. But what was most important, people of God, all these things would have been vain had he left in the grave. That would have been the end of Christianity. That would have been the end of our salvation. We have, we have still been doomed. Hallelujah. People of God. But something magnificent happened. That is why, because death did not hold him captive, because death did not hold him captive, this morning, people of God, I prophesy over your life, no sickness, no disease, no calamity, nothing, no situation, because you believe in Jesus as the resurrected Savior, as the resurrected Messiah, nothing shall hold you captive. You are coming out, you are bound to live the abundant life. You are bound to live in health and strength. Because by his stripes, we are healed this morning. May that healing come upon you this morning. May every blessing that comes with the resurrection money be your portion this morning. As people of God, as believers, this day was the day that the church was birthed. This day was the day that our Lord and our Savior Jesus, when he descended to hell and claimed and took away the keys of life and death from the hands of the enemy and proclaimed to the world that he is the Messiah. This is what we celebrate. This is what we celebrate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us look at Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Verse 1 to 20. Mark 16, 1 to 20. Mark 16, 1 to 20. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the main event. This is the main event. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 16. Verse 1. Wow. My God, my God, my God. Mark chapter 16, verse 1 to 20. It said, Now, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Madeline, Mary the mother of James, and Solomon brought spices that they might come and anoint him. <laughs> my God, my God. They had a plan to go to the grave and anoint the body with spices. But watch this. But watch this, with spices, that they might come and anoint him very early in the morning. On the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. Hallelujah. He is risen. The sun has risen. My God. And they said among themselves, who will roll away this tomb from the door of the tomb for us? The purpose in their mind. Hallelujah. They had a plan. This woman had a plan, hallelujah, to anoint the body of Jesus. And they, they were asking, who shall roll away the stone for us? My God. That's a whole new message. That's a whole new message. They had a plan. You see, this woman had a plan to have the stone rolled away 
from the tomb, from the entrance of the tomb. Ha! Ah, but also, God Almighty had a plan, a divine plan, to roll that stone away from the entrance of the tomb. This morning, by reason of this ministration, every stone that is holding you down, bound from coming out of that sickness, from coming out of that financial stagnation, from coming out this morning, people of God, every stone that is serving as a blockade, ah, people of God, for that's blocking you from coming out and entering into the place that God has ordained for you, people of God, this morning, by reason of this encounter, by reason of this divine encounter, angels have been sent on assignment to roll away the stone. Oh my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Every stone shall be rolled away this morning. The Bible says that, and they said among themselves, who will roll away the stone? Who will roll away the stone? From the door of the tomb for us. But when they look up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. For it was very large. Hallelujah. This takes the strength, I believe, of men to remove the stone. But when they look up, the stone had already been rolled away. Hallelujah. I prophesied over your life this morning, people of God, those of you watching me, that those of you, some of you, they have played your obituary and they said that this year you will die. But by the reason of this prophetic grace, by reason of this prophetic encounter, you have escaped the snare of the fowler. You have escaped. I nullify, I cancel every spirit of death, every plan of the enemy over your life to destroy you this year by reason of this resurrection money, the grace of resurrection, I release over your life this day in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. But when they look up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe, sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. Do not be afraid. You seek Jesus of Nazareth. Oh my Calabaskita. Malabaskita. You seek Jesus of Nazareth. Who was crucified. He is risen. Hallelujah. I have declared to you this morning. As a prophet of God. He is risen. He is risen. People of God. I am reading to you biblical accounts this morning. And after that. Ah, people of God, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, this Jesus, this Jesus that I'm ministering to you this morning, from the biblical account, I personally, by the grace of God, he found me faithful and revealed himself and showed himself just as he showed himself to the disciples. We will get to that aspect of it in a little bit. Let us, let us finish with this. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be afraid. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. Who was crucified? He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they lay him. Oh my God. He says, See, this is where he was lying. He is risen. He is not here. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth. People of God, you and I, we don't serve a dead God. We serve a risen Savior. He is alive. He is alive. The angel, the angel was proclaiming to them that Jesus is not here. He is alive. He is risen. Show, he showed them the place. He showed them the place. He was lying right here. He is not here. He's risen. He's risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go. Tell his disciples and Peter. Huh. Tell his disciples and Peter. Remember, Peter was one of the disciples. What did the Bible say? That? Tell his disciples and Peter. Remember, people of God. Peter denied Jesus. Hallelujah. During his trial, Peter denied him. He said he didn't even know him. People of God, sometimes when push comes to shove, when push comes to shove, people of God, 
Sometimes, some of you, you think you are wise. You think you are wise. You think you are wise. If it was some of you, I see some people that they minister and they will, they will, they will, they will make mockery of Peter, that he was a weakling. But some of you Christians, even pastors, you will not even stand the ground. When you are pushed and say, renounce Jesus, you will think it's wisdom. You will say that, oh, I was pushed. Go understands. No, God does not understand. Hallelujah. God, God will not understand that. Hallelujah. People of God, it is time for you to stand firm in the faith and know that the God that you serve is the God, is the risen Savior. That's what I believe the Bible says that they that know their God, they shall be strong. They shall do exploits. Hallelujah. Do you know your God? Do you know your God? Are you confident this morning that the God that you said is risen? You see, my spiritual father said that there are some pastors and there are some people who confess to be Christians, but deep, deep down in their hearts, they don't even believe that Jesus is risen. They don't even believe. They just read this thing. And they follow friends and they conform to pretend as though they believe. Because if you believe people of God, your lifestyle will demonstrate it. Your lifestyle will show it that you are truly a believer. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he shall, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Who all things have become new. Even the disciples, people of God, after Jesus Christ resurrected, and appeared to them, we we'll read that further here, and appeared to them, and he promised them the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, when they received the Holy Spirit, the boldness came upon them, and they went all across the world, and they turned the world outside down for Jesus, hallelujah. And I see most of you, that grace is available this morning. And that you yourselves will receive a part of that grace this morning. There is an anointing that is available on this resurrection morning, people of God. That will set you apart. That will make you distinct. Because our God and our Savior has risen. He overcome and conquered the grave that you and I may have dominion over sin. And have dominion over the enemy. And we will see how he empowered his disciples as well. Hallelujah. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be afraid. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you in Galilee. Hallelujah. He is going before you in Galilee. Galilee, there you will see him, as he said to you, my God, go to Galilee. That's another powerful message. Go to Galilee. <laughs> God, our Lord and our Savior, was risen. Was risen. He said, go to Galilee. He's going before you. Verse 8 says, so they went out quickly and fled. From the tomb, Mary Madeline and other Mary, they fled from the tomb. For they trembled and were amazed, and they said nothing to one another, for they were afraid. <coughs> My God, they were afraid. They were afraid. What they have seen, the tomb was empty. There was an angel proclaiming to them that Jesus of Nazareth, the one you seek, he is risen. He is risen. He is not here. Go and tell his disciples that he has gone ahead of them in Galilee, and there they will meet. Hallelujah. Now, when he arose early on the first day, now when he arose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, my God, my God, out of whom he had cast seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. While they were mooning and weeping, my God, he appeared to Mary Magdalene. And she went and spread the message that I have seen the Lord, Makataba, Siba, people of God. By the grace of God, there is nothing that I have done to earn this. I must confess to you, to earn this, God, in his infinite wisdom, find me faithful, find me faithful. On the morning of November 2017, 
about three o'clock in the morning. I was so tired to pray that morning. Some of you, you have been following me, you have heard this story. But it is important because that gives me the confidence and the audacity and the boldness to preach this Jesus that I preach. To preach this Jesus that I preach. So on the morning of November, November 3rd, 2017, it is written in my diary, in my diary here. That morning, I was so tired to wake up and pray. I run my own business. I run my own business. And, you know, I was so tired that morning to pray. And my wife woke me up. And she rebuked me. And I felt so condemned that the prophetic grace that is upon my life, that I cannot, I cannot stand up to the task. Hallelujah. Reading your Bible, fasting, praying, having quiet time to God. And I felt so condemned that morning. People of God. And I knelt down by the bed to pray in my children's room. I knelt down to pray. You know, because the room hasn't been set up yet for my children. So I use it for my prayer room. And as I knelt down to pray, people of God, I put my head on the bed like this, on my knees. People of God, it is important for some of you. I've captured that revelation that it is important for you when you are praying. Get on your knees and pray. It's a symbol and sign of humility. For some of you, you go to churches, you are too big to even get on your knees. You are looking at your clothes. You are looking at your shoes. You think you are, you know, all that. When you, when you humble yourself before Lord, the Lord, his words are true. He will exhort you. That morning, as I knelt down to pray, I fell a hand on my back. When I turned like this, physically, people have got this is no revelation or a, a dream or something. Physically, when I turned like this, we are talking about resurrection money. And that did Jesus who is his life. When I turned like this, I saw the Lord, our Lord and our Savior Jesus. The one that this Bible is talking about. The one that this Bible account is giving. The Jesus, our Lord, our God, and our Savior, appeared to me physically. Physically, I have seen him. That is why give me the boldness and the courage and the audacity to proclaim his word. To proclaim his infallible word. That doesn't mean that had I not seen him physically, I would not have had the boldness or the audacity to proclaim these words that I proclaim to you. But this morning, with a first-hand account, with a first-hand account, I can announce to you with all confidence that our Lord and our Savior, He is alive. He is alive. He is alive and well and strong. My God, my God, my God, I feel the unction this morning and I feel his presence. He is here with me right now. He is here with me right now. Oh my God, my Savior, he is alive, people of God. Our Savior is alive just as he appeared to the disciples, just as he appeared to Mary Magdalene, people of God. Our Lord and our Savior appeared to me physically. And I, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, not that, any, that by anything that I have, I have earned, I was able to have about 30 minutes conversation with God, my God. With the God that you and I serve, I was able to have about 30 minutes conversation with the God that you and I serve, the God that I preached to you this morning, the God that is accounted in this Bible, in this word of God, by the grace of God, I have met him in person. I have met him in person, people of God, and I've come to declare to you just as the word of God declared, just as the account of the book of Mark is declaring that he was he resurrected and he is alive. I have come to you. By the grace of God, I can proclaim 
to you that he is indeed risen. He is indeed alive. Hallelujah. 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 And the Lord sat on the bed and we had about 30 minutes conversation. And at that time in our ministry, when we just started ministry, we just started, there was some resistance and personal struggles in our finances, in our our, our life. And so I asked the Lord this question, people of God, by the grace of God, I'm able to quote the God that you and I serve, not from biblical account, but by personal account, I'm able to quote our Lord Jesus. So I asked the Lord this question concerning the difficulty and the challenge and, and, and the resistance that we were facing both in ministry and in our finances. And I mean, things we were, we were pressed on every side, people of God. I must confess to you that it was a difficult moment in my life. I was, we were preaching the gospel with all truth, with all boldness, with all audacity, without any hint, of, without any desire to manipulate the word of God. But yet and still, there were resistance Things were not happening, were not working for us. We were not living the abundant life. Life became so difficult for us. And so I asked the Lord, why are we suffering? This was what I asked. This was what I asked physically. This was what I asked. Why are we suffering? And then listen to this. Listen to these words. People of God, I am quoting Jesus now, not from the Bible. But what I heard him say to me in a face-to-face -face conversation, I said, Lord, why are we suffering? And he said, going forward, it shall be different. Going forward, it shall be different. Going forward, it shall be different. People of God, this was in the month of November. This was the in the month of November. People of God, for me, I live on commission. I live on commission. The business that I do, I live solely on commission. If I don't have a contract, I don't get paid. But people of God, after that conversation with the Lord, this was, this was November 10th. People of God, from that day to the end of December, hallelujah, I have made so much money in a single year that I have ever made in my life, in my business. He said, going forward, it shall be different. Going forward, it shall be different. My wife will tell you, my wife will tell you, my wife will tell you, even from that, from December till now, I do not struggle. I do not struggle because his words are true. His words are truth. And sometimes when I go out, sometimes a few days ago, specifically on the 27th, on the 27th, on the 27th of March, my God, on the 27th of March, I wrote so much contracts that I was like, wow, his words are true. His words are true. Now, that's just, that's, you know, that I just want to stand up your faith this morning. That God has no reason blessing you. He has no problem whatsoever blessing you. That money is not an issue. Money is not an issue. Money is not an issue. Hallelujah. If you seek God with your heart, if you seek him truly, hallelujah, there, 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 there are people who don't even worship the true God, yet and still he make provision for them. God made provision for them. What more about you? You who serve him. Last night we had a cross overnight. And the Lord spoke and said that. He gave us Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. That seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things shall be added unto you. People of God. If you will put God first. By the grace of God. By the grace of God. He found me faithful. He found me faithful. Not just from biblical accounts. That he is resurrected, that he is alive, that he is he's alive. He appeared in person. Let me read further. In verse eleven, Matthew chapter, uh, uh, yeah, Mark chapter sixteen, 
Verse 11 says, And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, Mary Madeline, they did not believe. They did not believe. People of God, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, I have joined another company of individuals who have met the Lord and Savior Jesus live by the grace of God. That I cannot point to anything that I have done in quite honesty and sincerity. I cannot point to anything that I have done for which he found me faithful to appear to me and have a conversation with me. I can say that there is nothing I can point to that I have done for which he found me faithful. He found me faithful to appear in person and have a conversation with a mortal man like me. Why? My God. My God. The Bible says in verse 11, And when they heard that he was alive, when they heard that he was alive, this morning you are hearing that he is alive, do you join that company of individuals that doubt? Oh my God. It says that when they heard that he was alive, alive and heard that, he was alive by her. They did not believe. Do you believe this morning? That is the question this morning. Do you believe that Jesus resurrected? Do you believe that he is alive? Do you believe that he is alive? Do you believe that he conquered the grave? Hallelujah. This is the day, people of God, that the church was birthed. That you and I now have the courage and the audacity and the boldness. To proclaim that Jesus is alive. That is what gave me the courage each and every day. That he backs this commission. That he backs this commission. That I did not just pick up the Bible like some other individuals. And just come and proclaim and preach and whatever the motive and desire is. To deceive many. Or because of money. Or because of material things. My God. And I am saying to, God, to the Lord, I do not, I do not want to mislead people because of money. Because God has been my source. God is my source. God is my source. God is my source. Each and every day when I wake up, just like the psalmist said, I look to the hills for whence come my help. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. If God be with me, ah, people of God, I don't have to fear. I don't have to worry. Hallelujah. This Jesus is alive. This Jesus that people are meddling with, are fooling around with. Some pastors are playing games and playing tricks and think that Jesus is not real. Jesus is alive and real. Some pastors say that, oh, the son and somebody's child died and we all have a job. And they are fighting one another because of money and resources and things. I have come to announce to you that Jesus, the God that you and I serve, he is alive. I have met him in person. Biblical account is good. Biblical account is good. But by the grace of God. I believe all of these words, but by the grace of God, I have met the Lord and Savior in person, have been seen with these two visible eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And by the grace of God, I can quote him. So the Bible is saying here that the disciples, when Mary Madeline told them that she saw him, that he was resurrected and alive, the Bible said they did not believe. They did not believe. Hallelujah. Do you believe this morning? Do you believe this money? Do you believe this money? Because there is a promise that comes when you believe. We will read further. There's a promise that comes when you believe. When you believe. Verse 12 says that. After that, he appeared in another form, my God, to two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and tore it. To the rest, but they did not believe them either. My God. So there's a struggle. There's a struggle of disbelief. People of God, when you believe this resurrection money, when you believe this resurrection money, that our Lord and our Savior Jesus 
resurrected. He conquered the grave. He turned your sin into salvation. Hallelujah. Something supernatural will happen in your life. After he appeared to Mary Magdalene, the Bible says that he appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it to the rest. He appeared to two disciples in another form. And they went to. So Mary Magdalene, then two. So people of God. People of God. People of God. Jesus is alive. So these are biblical accounts that he appeared to people after his resurrection. I just told you, the Lord appeared to me in person. In person. So that validates the account that I just read to you. That he is risen. That he is alive. Hallelujah. He appeared to two in another form. He appeared to two in another form. And they did not believe them either. Verse 14 says that. Later, he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table. At the, as they sat at the table. And he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. Because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Hallelujah. He appeared to 11. So one of them was asked, was absent. Hallelujah. And I believe it was Thomas. Hallelujah. He rebuked them for their, their, their unbelief. People of God. Do you want the Lord to rebuke you this morning? People of God. Believe. Believe. In the Lord your God. Second Chronicles 2020. Believe in the word of the Lord. And you shall stand firm. Believe in the words of the prophet. And you shall prosper. Your prosperity is in the mouth of the prophet. This morning. There's a prophetic grace. That is coming. That is, that is, that is over your life this morning. People of God. I prophesy over your life. That this year. The enemy shall not take you out. Every plan that the enemy has. To assassinate you. To destroy your destiny, to destroy your ministry, I prophesy over your life. You shall live well. You shall live well. You shall live well. Anything that represents death in your life, anything that represents death in your life, is about to be resurrected. Your ministry is going to another dimension. Your family is going to another height. Your children shall be sound this morning. Any spirit. All across the world that afflicts children this morning, people of God, if you believe these prophetic words that are coming forth because the Lord Jesus backs this commission, I declare and declare and decree over your life this morning, people of God, your life shall never remain the same. Everything that stands as an obstacle, I command it to be a miracle in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Exodus that as the children of Israel, as they were living captivity, when they arrived at the Red Sea, when they looked back, pursuing them were the Egyptians. Hallelujah. And they began to panic and said to Moses, Are there no graves in Egypt that you brought us here that we, can, that we should die? The Bible says the men of God told them to proceed and move forward. Hallelujah. What is it that is confronting you in your business, in your finances this morning, in your ministry that stands as an obstacle this morning? People of God, I, I, I speak as a prophet of God this morning and I say move forward. People of God, and the Bible says that the, the men of God told them that be still and see the salvation of the Lord. This morning I have come to announce to you that that marital challenge that, that, that spirit of addiction that is plaguing you, that is destroying your family, that is destroying your finances. Ah, my God, my God, my God. That sickness that has been holding you down for so long on this resurrection morning. Scripture tells us that the spirit that, that, that resurrected our Lord and our Savior Jesus lives in us. Hallelujah. As we read further, you're going to see the promise that comes with belief. When you believe this morning, there's a promise. There's a key that I'm about to put into your hands because you believe. These things you shall do. Watch this. He appeared to 11th of them. Hallelujah. And rebuked them of their disbelief. Of their disbelief. Rebuked them of their disbelief. Hallelujah. 
the hardness of heart. Because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. So there were people. He appeared to Mary Magdalene. He appeared to two of the disciples. Now they're in a room. God, 11 of them. And the Lord appeared. He rebuked them. Why well, you didn't believe? Why? People of God, do you believe this morning that you can be healed? Do you believe this morning that your children can stop being stubborn and listen to you? Do you believe this morning that that eye tumor is about to disappear? Do you believe this morning that leukemia is, is dying out away from your life? Do you believe this morning that that cancerous cell is about to die out this morning by reason of this prophetic grace? Do you believe this morning that you are living, you are bound in that which chair this morning because the Lord and our Savior resurrected this morning? I command you to rise up and walk this morning. I command you to get out from that wheelchair and walk. If you're watching me this morning from your hospital bed this morning, if you cannot walk, I command you to walk. I command you to walk. I command you to walk right now, right now, right now, right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, begin to get down from that bed. Begin to take that first step of faith this morning. If I be a man of God, if I be a man of God, if I be a man of God, and you are watching this morning, you are on that sick bed, you are on that sick bed, you are wheelchair bound this morning. As a prophet of God, I command you to rise up this resurrection morning. As a prophet of God, I command you to rise up from that wheelchair this morning and walk. I command every blind eyes, people of God, if you have your loved one that is sick right now, this is a prophetic time. This is a prophetic time to claim it for them. If you are sitting by them, put your hands on their head. Right now, as I begin to minister, the Spirit of the Lord God Almighty, the Jesus that backed this commission, Angels are about to validate these words, and that will prove indeed that I have been sent by God because the word of God is true, because the word of God shall be confirmed with signs and wonders. My God, I declare this morning, people of God, if you are sick this morning and you are watching right now, I command you to be healed. I command the dumb to speak. If you have a child that is dumb, I command you to speak right now. Say a word to them and they shall, they shall repeat. Put your fingers in their ears. They will begin to hear because they, our God is alive this morning. People of God, because in these last days, unless they'll see, unless people see the demonstration and the manifestation of the power and the glory of God, some will not believe. But this morning, under this prophetic unction, I command the bad eyes to be open. I command cancer cells to disappear. I command the limb to walk. I command deaf ears to be open. I command the dumb to speak this morning because our Lord and our Savior Jesus, He is alive. 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 Marital problem, the spirit of pornography, that spirit of division in your family, that spirit of disobedience in your family, I command it to live and disappear in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus, 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 by this they shall know, by this they shall know that I have sent you, by this they shall know that I have sent you, see the spirit of the Lord. If you will believe this morning and tap into this grace, your lives will never be the same. Your life will never be the same because the word of God is true. The word of God is true. He stands behind it and he backs every word. This morning, people of God, some of you this morning, you will have a burning test. Some of you, you have been healed right now. I can see it. You have been healed. Write your testimony. Begin to testify right now. Some of you, you need to get up from that bed. Get up from that bed. Get up from that bed. Our God is alive. Our God is alive. Our God is alive. Hallelujah. 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 People of God, we would love to hear your testimonies. 
We would love to hear that, your testimonies. Maka la baskita la bashia. Lambra abeke le beskipa la baskaya. Harabasike le meskita la baskaya. And Jesus rebuked them. Jesus rebuked them because of their, their, dis, their disbelief. Their disbelief. Verse 14 says, Later, he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, Maskala Bashita. That is what I stand on this morning. My God. That is what I stand on this morning. These are the words from the mouth. Just as I was able, I am able to quote from you the words that I heard from the mouth of our God. This is from his mouth. Watch this. Watch this. He says, in my name, in my name, this is when he appeared to his disciples and he commissioned them. Hallelujah. He says, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. In my name, they will cast out demons. People of God, I stand on the authority of these divine mandates from the mouth of God this morning. And I activate my covenant right as a disciple of God, as a disciple of Jesus, that in the name of Jesus, I rebuke every spear over your life, every spirit of epilepsy. I command you to leave God's people if you would tap into this and believe this hour. People of God, I am ministering to you right now. This is a time for you to receive your healing. I am about to cast out devils from your family, devils from your finances, demons from amongst your children. In the name of Jesus, I stand on these words. Ah, I, I stand upon these words. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 to 18. And this son shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. People of God, the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1, that the hands of the Lord are not short. None of his ears are dull that he cannot save. Wherever you are right now, people of God, I don't have to touch you, but by reason of this prophetic grace, I declare and decree that you are healed in the name of Jesus. You are healed from every satanic oppression. In the name of the Lord Jesus, ah, Atratus, I rebuke you on timely death. I rebuke you this morning in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, He said, In my name, I don't, I did not come to you this morning, people of God. In my own name, I come to you in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus this morning. And I declare, You are healed. You are healed. Few, few, few weeks ago, few weeks ago. The Lord took me into a, into a vision. And just like the, 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 the man of God, John, in Revelation, the, the, like he was taken on the island of Patmos. I was taken on an island. And when I looked ahead, people of God, I saw a gigantic serpent. And I took a stone and threw it at that step, serpent. And the serpent began to come close to me. And I found myself on top of a stone. And then all of a sudden, I saw there was a rod in my hand. And I began to pierce the head of the serpent. The head of the serpent. And the spirit of the Lord God said unto me, I have given you the power. I have given you the power to trample upon serpents, upon scorpions. People of God, this is what just been confirmed here. In the word of God. In the word of God. In the word of God. The word of God. The word of God. His voice are true. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. On this resurrection morning, people of God, this was the day. This was the day that the church was birthed. And Jesus was validated. The teachings of Jesus was validated. 
his claim as the Messiah was validated. And that is why you and I, we can now live today. We can now face the future with hope and confidence and without any fear that the God of the universe, the universe, is alive. Our Jesus is alive. Our God is alive. Death could not hold him captives. Therefore, no sickness, no disease, no challenge, no situation, even sin cannot hold you captive. People of God, for some of you, I see the Spirit of God is saying that you truly and sincerely want to serve God. But sin, that addiction, you have listened and have heard lies that it is impossible to live without sin. That it is impossible to live without sin. It's a lie from the pit of hell. From the pit of hell. You can live it based on relationship with Jesus. Not focusing on don't do this, don't do that. In as much as it is relationship based, you can live a holy life. Hebrew tells us, with our holiness, it is impossible to please God. With our holiness, no man can see God. So you must be holy. You must be pure. If anyone be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. How can you, how can you call yourself a born-again Christian? Nothing changed about you. You are not saved. You are not saved. So this morning, people of God, the best gift you can get was what Christ gave, the gift of salvation. The gift of salvation. That is why he endured the latch. That is why he endured the cross. That is why he ended up in a grave. He was in a grave for a while. But eventually, on the third day, people of God, by the grace of God, I have seen the risen Savior alive. Hallelujah. Not just from biblical accounts, but in person. And I've come to you this morning. To declare that he is alive. If you, if you are not saved, if you don't believe, you have been living your life anyhow this morning. This is a time. The best gift that you can give today, the good thing that you can give to your son, to your daughter, to your to your to your husband, to your wife, to your children, is salvation this morning. People of God, people of God, if you're not saved this morning, or you want to rededicate your life and recommit your life to God. Just say this little prayer. Say, Father, I believe that you are my Savior. I believe that you were beaten, you were bruised, you were crucified, you were dead, you were buried, and you resurrected. And you alone and you alone is my Lord and my Savior. People of God, it is important for you to understand that Jesus should be the only Lord and Savior of your life. He said, no one comes to the Father except by me. You must go through Jesus. For some of you, you claim and profess to be Christian, but you still have little juju on the side. On the side. Hallelujah. You are not saved. You are not saved. You are not saved. Fornication, adultery, murder, gossip, sin is sin, small sin, big sin. Sin, sin is sin. People of God, we can live this victorious life with the mindset of it being a relationship with God and our Savior Jesus. Thank you this morning for coming in. Thank you for listening. And I believe that God has touched you, that God has healed you this morning. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. People of God. People of God. People of God. I just want to talk to you personally this morning. Our Lord is alive. Our Savior is alive. Our Jesus is alive. Our Jesus is alive. Now, no sickness, no disease, poverty cannot hold you. People of God, most of us were born into poverty. Some of you, you cannot count in your family. You cannot count a prominent person in your family. Hallelujah. 
The Bible says he became poor and we may become rich. Hallelujah. My God. My God. It's a God of wonders. He's doing mighty things. He's healing the oppressed. He's setting the captives free. He's a lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star this morning. The ruler around the nations. The great and mighty one. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. He's a mighty and blessed one. The great I am that I am. He's the great I am this morning. People of God. There is no one like our God. He's the great I am. Some of you, you need to take your wife out this morning, this day for dinner, and celebrate our Lord. He is alive. People of God, if you capture this, that our God is alive, my God. Take your family out and celebrate. No more worries, no more fear. For some of you, you are worried about your finances. Today, I prophesy that financial stagnation, that barrier is broken. In the name of the Lord Jesus, if you will believe this word as a prophet of God, this day, you are about to enter into a land of increase and prominence. Is taking you from behind and bringing you to the front. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of abundance. Today is the day that God is saying, Come and celebrate with me. Come and celebrate with me. Rejoice again. For some of you, there has not been peace in your family, in your house. It's about time that you make peace with your wife. It's about time that you make peace with your husband. It's about time that you make peace with your children. It's about time that you make peace with your auntie, your uncles. It is about time, people of God. Because our God, our Savior, has risen. Oh my God, He conquered grave. He conquered the grave. He conquered death. He conquered death. People of God. People of God. Victory. Victory. Today is the day of victory. I am so excited. I am so excited. I am so happy right now. Oh my God, my God, my God. There is none like our God. There is none like our God. There is none like our God. He is racing. He is racing. He is racing. Lambro Lambro Robo you have been watching me from all across the world, Africa, Asia, Europe, Australia, Canada, whatever, whatever you are this morning. Celebrate our God. He is alive. He's the great I am. He's the great I am. He is the ancient of days. He is the ancient of days. What is it that you are going to? What is it that you are going to? Our God is bigger than that. Our God is bigger than that. Our God is bigger than that. For some of you, you have lost. A loved one, you have lost a loved one, you have lost a loved one just like me a few years back. When I lost, I lost my mother. I thought it was over. I thought it was over. People of God, people of God, I thought it was over. For some of you, you think it is over, but God is taking you. God has a hand in this. It is for your own good. God is moving you from a place of austerity to a place of prominence to a place of prominence. Thank you this morning. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for coming in this morning. People of God, I declare you are blessed. I declare your family is blessed as we close this morning. I declare you are blessed. You shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be the first and not the last. From this day going forward, just as the word of Jesus Christ came and spoke to me that the, the Lord spoke to me that morning and said going forward it shall be different. I speak those words over your life this morning that going forward it shall be different. Going forward it shall be different. Going forward it shall be different. Whatever the situation, be it finances, be it your, your relationship, your, 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 your marriage, a situation with your children. Ah, you, may be, you, you may be going through circumstances where your children are bringing you problems instead of being 
a blessing. This day I prophesy over your life that going forward it shall be different. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Those of you, those of you, those of you who have given your life today to Jesus, begin to celebrate. Find a Bible-believing church. Find a Bible-believing church and worship and go. You can also follow us on Facebook Live. Follow us on Facebook Live. People of God. People of God. And if you want to be a blessing, we, will want, we want to hear your testimonies from today's broadcast. We want to hear your testimonies. We want to hear your testimonies. Go to the Facebook feed and, and, and you know, put your testimonies out that we would love to hear from you. Go on our website, www.divineguardiansusa.org. www.divineguardiansusa.org. People of God, give us, send us your prayer requests. You can fill out the, the form there. Send us your prayer request and we will pray for you. We will pray with you. We will join you in prayer and believe God together and connect our faith with yours. Hallelujah. And on that website, www.divineguidanceusa.org, if you are blessed and you want to be a blessing to this great commission, there's a button on there that says donate. People of God, people of God, you can go on there and be a blessing to the work of God. And God, in return, will bless you. Cast your bird upon the water for many days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be blessed this morning. Be, a, be, 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 oh my God, my God, my God. I'm about to close. And God is releasing an anointing, an anointing, a, an entrepreneurial grace. An anointing is available. Those of you, some of you are supposed to start a new business. You're supposed to start a new business. The anointing is available. The anointing is available. Because your business will give you more liberty and more freedom to live the abundant life. People of God, people of God, God wants to bless you with a business this morning. Business this morning. New jobs. Those of you believing God for jobs. The grace is available. Hallelujah. The grace is available. Receive it this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your people. We bless you. We honor you this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Stay blessed.